coming up next on Get Caught in a Net. You are now tuned in to Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette, where your hosts, Annette Harris, analyze intriguing life questions and concerns, such as, do Christians suffer from mental illness? Have you wondered why they act abnormal? Or you may ask, what is really going on in their minds? Do you need Annette? Well, keep listening for a biblical understanding of the psychology of the mind. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Great afternoon to each and every one of you. I am your girl, your host of Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette. I'm Annette Harris. I am also your certified positive mental health ambassador and author of that nominated bestseller, Surviving a Silence Heartbeat. Listen, guys, come on in. I always say, what do I tell you at 12 o'clock? noon central standard time on a wednesday if you see my face it's time for you to come on and get caught in a net yes i have some exciting uh, guests that i'm going to feature on today i always get excited every wednesday you guys know that so i ask that when you come in please do me a favor share like love share throw up the care button if you would not mind tag individuals into this live feed so that they will not miss what we have going on um you know before i go further lord we thank you for all things we thank you for this day that you've blessed us to see we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in our lives um, we're almost at the end of another year but we appreciate what you've done thus far we pray that you would get the glory out of this segment and everything we go to say and do in jesus name we pray and the opening part the opening part of the scripture hosea 4 and 6 states my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee and we know that that is what our uh, show today is based off of is based off of that scripture and we are excited to be here with you on this afternoon it is another time for us to come and bring you great quality programming i have um, some individuals i'm going to feature this is really actually my second installment of interviews with the distinguished authors guild nominees we started on friday and what we did was we uh wanted to feature the CEO of the Distinguished Authors Guild um, and none other than uh, Gina Gadsden herself. And then we featured a couple of the nominees on uh, Friday. We had uh, Teresa Hickman and then also Takesha Wade. Now, uh, today, Friday, this coming Friday and next Wednesday, we're going to continue featuring our nominees from DAG, as we call it. Uh, this is so exciting to be a part of this, but I wanted to feature these individuals. So I'm going to bring on to the stage uh, from the virtual waiting room. Mr. Michael Bailey is in the virtual house on today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Everything is good on my end and yourself. I'm doing well. I am doing so well. And I'm so glad to have you here with us and to uh, join in with us on today and to talk about your uh, about you, yourself, your books, your nomination, because this is such an exciting time that we have been blessed to uh, partake of. And God is getting the glory. And so we're, we're grateful for that. So thank you for taking the time out, first and foremost, to join me on today here on Mind, Body and Soul with Annette. Do me a favor. I have your bio, but if you would not mind for me describing who Mr. Bailey is uh, to those who are just now meeting you for the first time or even those who may know you, maybe need to little, have a little refresher about Michael Bailey. Uh, to those who are just now meeting you for the first time or even those who may know you. Okay, Michael Bailey, I was born and raised in Steel Reside, Los Angeles, California, a native of Angelino. Been home all my life. Uh, uh, 
Elementary school was where my talent was first recognized for writing. I was kind of a disruptive kid, but when I sat down to do a writing assignment in class, it always came pretty natural. So one particular paper I wrote, uh, later on that night, the teacher called my mother. Mother said, what did he do now? Was he in trouble? She said, no, no. Did he write it all by himself or did he have some help? She said, no. She said, he wrote it all by himself. I was watching him while he was sitting at the dining room table. So they talked a little more. And from there, uh, eventually, I was uh, admitted to the gifted program and kept on writing, never really took it serious, never thought about it as a profession or anything. Uh, not until I got to college and I took a screenwriting class. That was my major. So I majored in that. And after I left college, I pursued screenwriting just a little bit, not too much, but a little success. And so uh, several years ago, I said, well, let me buckle down and try my hand at fiction writing, writing novels. So I wrote a few novels before I got to uh, Original Mind Disconnect. I got the idea for Original Mind Disconnect, uh, must have been around 2014, 2015. And basically it was just one sentence that a young man has visions of life in the past. And from there, I took on it and elaborated and built on it and fleshed out the plots, the story, uh, built character backgrounds, bios for the different characters, the protagonists, supporting characters. And in 2015, I actually sat down and wrote the first draft and it took about, took about three months to write the first draft. So this is where we're wow. today. Wow. Okay. So three months. All right. So, but let me ask you now, what was this that you wrote that obviously was so impressive to your teacher to call your mom? You know, I have no idea. That was back in elementary school, uh, third, fourth grade. I don't know. I had no idea. My mom would probably say, because she has a good memory about that when it comes to keeping stories and mementos and souvenirs from, you know, school days. But I have no idea. Wow. Wow. Okay. I mean, I only ask that because sometimes that is where people start off, you know, with their writing. So they right. may remember like all the details of it, but I mean, I get it. I understand. Like you said, it was uh, such a long time ago, yeah. but um, okay. So obviously that was so impressive to her. So let me ask you this question. And I've asked this of um, the other guests that I had, was your life influenced by your experiences or your experiences influenced by your life? I think my life was in, influenced definitely by my experiences. How? Yeah. How mm, uh, from elementary up to high school, I was pretty active in church and went on a regular basis, sang in the choir. And when I was young, I was an altar boy. But when I got out of college, uh, I quit college about a year, year and a half before I was supposed to graduate. Hmm. And I was going through some things, had some challenges, some ups and downs, and I had a kind of fell out with uh, going to church, organized religion. I never gave up on my faith and belief in a higher power. I never gave up on God. But the organized religion, I didn't think at that time, was really giving me what I felt I needed. So uh, wow. I think writing was a way for me to help sort things out, to delve into myself and uh, really see what what it was that I was searching for. And writing helped me, uh, it, it was a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, okay. Almost like a lifeline for you, if you will. Exactly. Okay, okay, exactly all right, I get it. Okay. And sometimes, and I, I can kind of relate to that, Michael, because the type of person that I am to get my words out or to express myself, I have to sit down and write. I have to write it out. You know what I mean? Um, I probably would also consider myself one that I kind of go off script or I, you know, go just go off the top of my head. But when I write it down, that's it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. Same here, same here. Yeah. Okay. So okay. For me, it's like a, it's like cathartic. It's like a therapy. And yeah, uh, I don't do it as much, but I used to do I, when I was making notes in my uh, journals about scripts and and books and you know jot down ideas for plots and characters. I would also take the time to write down what was going on in my mind, what thoughts I was having, you know, what was getting under my skin, what was good, what was not so good. So yeah. Okay. Writing has served its purpose for me more than one way. 
Right. Okay. I hear you. I get it. I love it. Mm, I love that mentality. Um, yeah, that that that's good. And that will probably encourage others as well. Those who may want to write, um, maybe they're a little hesitant, you know, you're kind of giving them a little, you know, piece of advice there. Just kind of maybe talk about your feelings or how you feel. Because some, sometimes people don't know exactly where to start to write. They may want to write, but they don't know exactly where to start. Um, let me let me stay on that a little bit. As an author, now, how many books have you authored? Uh, prior to prior to original mind, just gonna I say maybe four. Four. Okay. Four books. All right. Uh -huh. This is the first okay. one to get published. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that kind of goes in line with what I want to ask you. What kind of encouragement would you give to those who? Who desire to write maybe they've sat down you know years ago and started writing and then they pushed it to the side or life started happening and maybe they weren't able to get back to it what kind of encouragement would you give to someone who's um who know they should be an author looking to become an author or maybe it's just been a little difficult for them uh what i would say is pace yourself don't put too much on your plate at one time uh, what I say is that uh, if you can write a page a day, every day for 365 days, you'll have 365 pages at the end of the year. And right now, nowadays in the publishing game, that's about the average length for a book. And don't be too hard because that, that's usually what it takes for most people. Uh, from the first draft and the rewrites and the editing and the proofing and all that, it'll take over a year, year and a half, two years. So I'd say uh, discipline also. You know, you really have to uh, develop a discipline and a structure where this is what I'm going to do writing in terms of X amount of hours, X amount of whatever during the day, evening, afternoon, block that time out and just sit down and just let it flow, whether it's stream of conscious, whether you're going by a, uh, an outline or something like that, just let it all come out. You don't have to get it right that first, that day, that very day when, you, when you're writing. Give yourself space and give yourself a room to say, okay, I can always come back the next day and edit and rewrite. Just my concern is just get it out on the page and just let it flow like a faucet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and that's the discipline you talk about when you mentioned just yeah. sit down and just write. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's great advice, actually. That's very great advice um, because, you know, sometimes people can kind of get stuck. I know that when my book came out i cannot tell you the countless number of people that said i've been meaning to and wanting to write a book you know and it's like some of them they have like manuscripts you know maybe in their closet or something or sitting on their desk right. that they never really did anything else with and you know so then when I wrote my book and these are people that I know, maybe loved ones and, you know, family members, they like, okay, it kind of sparked them and encouraged them um, to go ahead and do it. And so I always say, and I learned this from my publisher that everyone has a book inside of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do you feel about that? You, you believe that, but what is, you want to add anything else to that? Everybody has a book inside them. It's just, a, to me, it comes down to how do you go about the process of releasing that book and getting what's inside of you down on paper, whether it's long hand or whether you're typing it. Uh, that really requires you sitting down and putting in the effort, the, the brain, the, the mental work, the mental work of really getting down everything, like I just said, put it down on paper, let it flow, don't worry about it being perfect because nobody gets it right or perfect the first time and just flow and let it go. Uh, no matter if, if, the, if it's chronological, chapter one through whatever, or you, it comes to you in bits and pieces out of order, let it flow. That's what I say. Just let it out, let it flow, let it go. And once you have a, something to really build on, you see a story or a plot really coming, coming into effect and it's taking shape, then for me, I think that's when you started to head down the right path and you know you're on yeah. the way. Good advice. That's great advice. Um, question for you. This is not even on my questions, but I want to ask you this. As a 
man, as an African-American man, what does um, holding the title of author mean to you? Um, was it important? I mean, I know you said it had been like some years before your book was actually published. Uh, and this was the only one that was published. What does being an author mean to you as a black man? What it means to me as a black man, it's a way of putting myself or my thoughts or feelings or my stance or how I feel about things in society out in the world to be shared and discussed with other people. Um, I feel like there a lot, a lot of times there's not a lot of, especially in traditional publishing, but publishing in general, you don't see a lot of black male authors oftentimes get off of contracts and book deals. Right. And a lot of times what I find is a lot of us as black men writers, male writers, we go the self-publication route because uh, a lot of times the doors just aren't open. But also I feel like I'm following in the tradition of black male writers who came before me like uh, Richard Wright and Ralph Ellison and James Baldwin, uh, uh, Chester Hines, people like that. I feel like I'm carrying on the uh, tradition that Ernest uh, J. Gaines from Louisiana. Uh, I feel, you know, we're all distinct. We all have our own voice. We all have our own style, but we share in common our experiences living as black men in America. So mm. that's what I feel. Ooh, now you know what? You just started up some stuff when you start rattling off those authors. Man, Richard Wright was, when I was young, oh my God, I loved reading his, his books. It was just amazing to me how he would, he would take you in, yes, he would. you know? Um, and it's, it, it was, he just took his time and just, you know, laid things out and boy, you were, you were like really involved in it as if you were watching a movie or something, you know, well, that's how it was for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you, you took me back saying those and then Baldwin and different ones. Um, but you're right. We don't have that many of our black men either writing or publishing their books it's 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 kind of you're you're almost an an anomaly, <laughs> you know, yeah, so to thing. speak. The sad part about it to me is that, uh, for me, even though I was in the gifted program and it was recognized from a young age that I had a talent for writing, uh, a lot of times as black men, not just write, but we're not really encouraged to express ourselves on paper. We're not really encouraged to say, "Well, go ahead and get what you feel down on paper." And, you know, it's almost like it's not cool or you know, it may be seen like it's not the thing for a black man to do, but some of our, some of our best black men were, uh, were writers, novelists, not, yeah. you know, fiction. So like I said earlier, I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of those who came before me. Yeah. And indeed you are, Mr. Bailey. Indeed you are. And I, I love it. You know, uh, anyone knows me, I love to encourage our black men um, in, you know, whatever area that they're in. And so, you know, I encourage you to continue um, in, in doing what you're doing because you're helping others. You are. You are showing our world and you're showing our other brothers, man, you can express yourself. You know, if you want to do it through writing, this is a, a wonderful way to do it and do away with that stigma because you kind of touched on it that our men can't show their emotions or their expressions, you know, at all. You got to keep it shut up. You know, you're the man. You're supposed to be strong. You're not supposed to show anything. Um, you're showing them otherwise. And that that's a good thing. Um, because you know what? At the end of the day, what I this is just me thinking it's also healing for you. Um, True. It's therapy is uh, cathartic. Yeah, definitely. You know um, uh, with, um, I think the world of rap, the rap game has opened a door and you see it with so many young men. I mean, young women too, but especially the young men. It's given them an outlet to get everything that they feel, everything they can express. They can express their rap lyrics. I mean, because they're poets basically at the end of the, end of the day from what I see. They're poets, yeah. you know, like a yep. Gil Scott Heron going back to him, you know, and I think it's great to see because I've also went in elementary school. I tried my hand. I could, I could still to this day write poetry. Matter of fact, I hadn't written any. It had been some years, many years until 
I wrote another novel recently, and one of the supporting characters was a rapper. And I oh. said, well, if he's going to rap, if he's a rapper, then I got to come up with some lyrics. So I just started writing. I said, let me see if I can do it. It's been since junior high and high school, but it was like turning on a faucet. It just came back automatically. Okay, okay. Wow, that's a great point, though. You're right, because they really are, um, you know, that is that is the area and they're artists in that respect and they're able to express themselves um, through rap, you know, and um, bring the world in with them and help them help the world to understand their mentality as well. Um, so that, that that's good. I had a um, I had a poet, a black male poet on. Let's see. I think it was like it was last month. And uh, these months are moving so fast, but I had him on and he has five books out now. He does poetry, all poetry. And, you know, I, I, when I first met him, I was really amazed, you know, because here he's a young man too. I think he's like in his forties. Uh -huh. I guess I'm showing my age, but anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> he's uh, a young man, but he's able to sit down and just express himself. And he's been through an awful lot. Um, in his life. And so he's able to, you know, put it in uh, poetry form and put it in black and white, um, which I, I just think is absolutely amazing. Um, it, it needs to happen that way. Our children need to see it, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So that's that that's a good thing. I know I kind of got off into talking about the male authors and everything, but that, that was a good thing because I really wanted to bring that out. Um, you know, I'm looking at you, you know, my brother, and you, you're doing it. And I, I love it. And I, I encourage you to continue. I really do. You're welcome. Um, I know that um, I, I know we have other guests that we're going to have on, but I want to ask you this. Talk about your supporters. Those who are in your in your in your in, in your group and you're on your team, you know, um, that help have helped you, you know, even through your writing process. And then also talk about those who were not so supporter, those naysayers, if you would not mind, as it relates to your book. Oh, okay, well, well, it goes without saying, without a question, would be my parents, my immediate family, and extended family too, but my mom and dad and my brother. Uh, uh, the three of them is all. They have always been very, very supportive. They've never really yeah. been critical. They've been. Uh, they've always given me the uh, the courage and the faith that I can go out there and achieve anything I set my mind to, regardless of what it is. Um, they always knew I could write. I mean, they they knew it before my teacher knew it, you know. And it's quietly, especially my parents, in their own way, you know. And I can feel it, even though they may not be there in person. I can feel them around me, you know, giving me a pat on the back, uh, you know, hey, thumbs up, way to go. They were very pleased when I told them I got nominated. Said, and they would say, yeah, for your first book, that's a heck of an achievement. And I yes. said, so, yeah, you're right, it is, because of all the work I put into it. And to be recognized for my first book being published, I, you know, that's, that's a heck of a thing. So I'm really grateful for that. But as far as the naysayers, I don't really know of any personally that I've had to deal with directly because I don't allow all the negativity to get in my way to come into my space. You know, if it's not positive, you keep it moving. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't have any time for that because it can influence you, especially writers. You know, there's so much outside influence. That's another thing you have to learn how to tune things out and especially mm -hmm. naysayers, you know, because not everybody's going to be receptive. Like I said, it's kind of hard for a lot of black writers, especially black male writers, to get book deals with traditional publisher, you know, because they might they'll come up with who knows how many excuses as to why not they'll offer you, why they won't offer you a contract. But on the other hand, a white writer, they'll literally roll out the red carpet, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, wait. I love it. I love it. You know, you put down some um, some gems here on today. I, I appreciate that. And, I, you know, it, it helps you, though, you know, when you're writing or whatever project that you're doing to have that support um, behind you. It kind of pushes you, you know, a little bit. Um, I think the only way <laughs> the main way that I handle my uh, any naysayers that there could have been, I didn't tell anybody I was writing a book. <laughs> oh, OK. Because that, that was just me. Think about it. Yeah, me too. The same here. Not that thing. I, I told my family and a few of my other friends. Yeah. Right. But I didn't yeah. Really I, I, I didn't broadcast it. 
Exactly. And it's not that you're trying to be funny, but you you knew that you had a mission to accomplish and to do. And you just like you said, you block out, you know, everything else that you kind of maybe anticipate would um, try to hinder you. And you, you didn't yeah. want that to happen. So, OK. All right. Uh-huh. Well, um, um, great for your team, your family, your loved ones for supporting you and pushing you through uh, that. Again, like I said, it, it's so needed. It's so needed. Now, where can they find you? Where can they find your book? Um, and then I'm going to ask you about uh, a little bit more about the nomination before we end. OK, my book can be found right now on um, Amazon.com. It's here in okay. America. It's also in several countries around the world. Uh, Japan, Canada, Great Britain, Poland, Italy, Spain. So they put me out there internationally. So I'm just glad to see it get out there and hopefully it's well received. Right, right okay. now I'm also working on the process of getting me an office website built. So that should be up and running pretty soon. Okay. So, but for right now, they can find you on Amazon? Amazon. And I've been okay. working, I'm trying to hook up with uh, some independent black bookstores. There's two here in uh, Los Angeles. One is Malik Books, and I just entered into a wholesale deal with them. They're going to carry my book. And there's a new uh, bookshop out in uh, Pasadena. It's about 20 minutes away from LA. And, okay. Uh, it's black owned, and the sister, she's going to read my book, and hopefully we have a deal going with her too. Beautiful. It's getting there. Yeah. Push it out, man. Push it out. Yeah. And you know, watch God open doors for you because exactly. you know his, his will is it, it's gonna be done. It has to be done. Um, exactly. and so this is wonderful. Okay, the name of your book. Original Mind Disconnect. Original Mind Disconnect. Yes. Okay, all right. Hmm. How do we come with that name? You know what? Uh, original mind disconnect. I just uh, I said, okay, original mind. Original mind. Well, Africa is the birthplace of humankind, the first man and the first woman. So that's the first mind, the original mind. The disconnect okay. part comes from what his grandmother, uh, great grandmother, third great grandmother, Sudi, feels that. In his pursuit, the protagonist, in his pursuit of wealth and success and whatnot, she feels at some point he's becoming more disconnected from his roots, from what really matters besides uh, money and uh, fame and all that. So that's where the disconnect comes from. Hmm. Interesting. And this is the one that you had been working on for so many years and, and it was just not published? Yeah, it was published. Uh, 2021. 2021. Okay. Uh-huh. So it's been a couple of years since it came out. Um, 2022. 22. 20, okay. 20, All right. 2022. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So you celebrated a year this year. Exactly. Book birth. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Original Mind Disconnect. You guys, you can find it on Amazon. As he was talking, I'm typing in the name of his book and, um, also made sure that you see his name, Mr. Michael Bailey, Original Mind Disconnect, and you can look for it on Amazon. Please make sure you support him. Um, and we have a few more minutes um, as I'm waiting on the other guests to log on. Talk to us about what this nomination through Distinguished Authors Guild means to you. What it means to me is uh, all my hard work and all the effort and time I put in over the years, not just with this one particular novel, but writing in general. It lets me know that I'm on the right path and I must be doing something some right. And to get recognized like for my first novel, because I don't know how many people applied for the, uh, the uh, awards who sent in applications, but to be singled out, to be one of three nominees in a category, is a, it's a great thing and lets me know that Okay, what I wrote, it, it, it connected with people and it resonated. And that can't help but to be a good thing all the way around. And I like yeah. the fact that I put forth a story about something, uh, someone that I don't really see too much of is a young black man in his 30s who's uh, very successful, very grounded, uh, very connected to who he is, uh, loves his daughter, loves his girlfriend that he's in a long time relationship with. Um, 
And uh, that's just not the type of character you see often. And also mm -hmm. you make a statement about, uh, I think the book walks the fine line between glorifying a certain lifestyle while at the same time being a cautionary tale. So uh, okay. hopefully uh, people will pick up on that and it resonates with them. Hmm. Okay. Love it. All right. I see. I see. Listen, do me a favor. Give me a 30 second pitch of your book. 30 second elevator pitch of your book. Okay, Original Mind Disconnect is a story that takes place in Los Angeles present day. And it's about a young, successful African-American man who's a sports agent who represents uh, superstar basketball players. Those are his main clients. And uh, one day, out of the blue, life is going good. You know, he has the daughter, the beautiful girl, who's successful in her own right. The home and everything that people say makes you a success. And he finds himself visited one day by a woman elderly woman who just shows up and he looks and he looks away like his eyes are playing tricks he looks back and she's gone she soon soon she uh shows herself introduces herself and tells him that i am sudi i'm your third great grandmother i lived during slavery and the main reason i'm here is so that you can take up the fight and join the fight for reparations he butts head his name is jericho jericho street is that rubs Jericho the, the wrong way because he doesn't believe that black people should be should be waiting around to receive any kind of reparations or uh, money from the government. He believes we should be self-sufficient financially and work for ourselves to get our own money without looking for any kind of handout, somebody issuing out. She's Ooh. just as stubborn as he is. So they fight and butt heads and fight and bicker and butt heads until one day she tell she says, uh, I'll have to resort to doing something I didn't want to do. She possesses. Oh, wait, stop the there. Stop time. there. Stop there. I don't want you to give it all away. That's good. Okay. I like that. Okay. I like that. I wanted something to intrigue them. I want them to be able to, you know, go and search for this on Amazon. But that was intriguing though. That's that's interesting. Because we are talking about the reparations. It seemed like more than ever now. Um, and so it sounds like your book is is going to touch on something that that's really really important to each of us, um, which whichever side of the coin that we're on, um, whether we feel like we need to get it or, as he was saying, he think we should do it ourselves. You know, don't wait on man, so to speak. Okay, all right, okay. I see you. I see you, Mr. Bailey. I see you. I'm and I'm loving this. Listen, guys, uh, let me recognize those of you who have joined us. And I surely appreciate you coming in on today. Um, I think Natalie has joined us. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you. Um, also, is that Deatrice? Thank you for liking and sharing. I think Janice was on. And thank you for liking and sharing. This is this is some good, good stuff here. And I, I'm truly appreciative of, again, you taking time out and joining us on today. Um, you guys, I don't even know if I said at the beginning, we are on live on both of my pages on Facebook, Annette Get Caught in the Net, Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette, and also on YouTube at Get Caught in the Net. At the end of this entire segment, we're going to have it uploaded to Intellectual Radio's YouTube channel, which is where Mind, Body, and Soul is housed. That's our radio station with the super <laughs> duper producer. Pearl Winfrey. And then also we're live on Instagram now as well. So you can't miss a beat. Um, if you're just now joining us and you may have to rewind to listen to Mr. Bailey, then um, I encourage you to do that because my brother was putting down some stuff today. And I, I love it. I love it. You know, there was something in your bio. Mm. Well, you kind of talked about this, about when you um, when you write. You also talked about the complexity of human nature. So what what does has that always been that intriguing to you that you felt you would need to write about it in a sense? Yeah, I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm a writer is because I'm intrigued and interested in human nature. You know, maybe I don't always like certain people, but I'm mm -hmm. constantly intrigued by uh, human nature and why people do the things they do and why they behave in certain ways when it comes to certain types of situations. 
Right. And what would they okay. Do if they had their backs up against the wall, what kind of uh, action would they take? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I get it. I understand. I have always been anybody who knows me. Now I'm all things psychology, and I'm always trying to figure out what's going on in somebody's mind and why they're doing this and why they're doing that. So we're kind of right there <laughs> with that same mentality. So yeah, I, I get it. I totally get it. Because I'm always trying to figure out what in the world, why are we doing this? And what, what's the reason behind it? You know, is there a background to it? I'm always trying to, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always looking deep, deeper and, and further. Um, can you give us some encouraging words before you leave on today? Um, something, I know you encouraged those who um, maybe are looking to be authors or who have been you know, kind of procrastinating about it, but maybe just something in general, just to encourage us before you exit on today. Well, in writing, like in all endeavors, if there's something you want to shoot for, if there's something that you really feel that's in your spirit, to go out there and uh, make it happen. I said, just go ahead, go ahead and make it happen. Uh, clear your mind, whether, whether it's negative self-talk, whether it's uh, negative talk or discouragement from other people and just focus on what it is that you want to go for. Put on the blinders and have that tunnel vision and just focus in and go for it. Go mm -hmm. for it and it's not going to come easy. It's going to take work, but I believe in the end, I'm looking at my own life, that it was well worth the effort and the time. Right. right. Okay. 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 I, love it. I love it. Well, those have been some encouraging words, and you have actually encouraged us throughout this interview on today. So I want to say thank you and congratulations again uh, to again. you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, this this is wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And then, you know, you're you're amongst other authors. You're able to meet and network. I think this is a great thing that Distinguished Authors Guild has. Um, and then, of course, we all know, and I'm just throwing this in now, you know, that uh, the proceeds from the tickets will go towards a scholarship. Uh, I think they're trying to get 10 scholarships, um, $1,000 each for a college freshmen. So, um, you guys, it, it would just absolutely be wonderful if you would be able to purchase. You can purchase a virtual ticket or ticket in person. Now, y'all know y'all want to go to Vegas, so y'all come on with us. <laughs> we encourage you to do so. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Bailey, are you going to be in Vegas? Uh, if all goes according to plan, yes, I will be there. Okay. All right. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to meet you in person because um, I will be attending and uh, yes. we'll, we'll be able to network a little bit further. So thank you again. I appreciate you. And I, I bid you Godspeed and pray that God will just continue to bless you. Thank you. You do the same. All good blessings and good luck to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that again was Mr. Michael Bailey as he's exiting. Um, uh, we're just appreciative and thankful. All right, he got a peace sign up. <laughs> All right. So uh, he is the author again. Um, let me let me grow, go back here. Oh, my goodness. I had it here. I had it here. Y'all, did y'all see in the comment section where I had the title? Uh oh. All right. Here it is right here. And that's going to get this together. Original Mind Disconnect. All right. It's on the screen, guys. It's on the screen. Michael Bailey, Original Mind Disconnect. And you can find it on Amazon. So even as I'm talking, y'all know y'all can open up another little browser and go to Amazon real quick and get the book, purchase the book, support my brother. He's doing a great thing. And we are grateful. We are so grateful. So now we're going to switch up a little bit and we're going to bring on um, another uh, author that has been nominated by Distinguished Authors Guild. Natalie is in the virtual house. I'm going to bring her on the stage right now. And I do say switching up because we did have um, another individual that was another author, um, but I'm not sure what happened with them. So we have Natalie going to come to the stage. <laughs> Natalie. All right, Nat. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Guys, welcome Natalie Murphy in. Oh my goodness. This this woman, I'll tell you the truth. I think um my first acquaintance with her, we had a Zoom call. And I saw her picture 
on the Zoom and underneath it, it said, author Natalie Murphy. And I went to my thing and I changed it and I said, author <laughs> Natalie <laughs> <laughs> you influence me in a good okay. way. Because <laughs> you know what? I guess at this point, I mean, I think you've written, I don't know how many books by now, but Seven. I've only written one. And so it's still sinking in to be totally honest with you that I'm an author, right? And I'm like, okay, she's got a good point. Author Annette Harris. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of those things that Gina has taught me. Because wow. like she said, when I first started doing this thing, I was like, I always tell people, I'm always a pip. I, I'm, okay. I'm in the background. And <laughs> Gina was like, you you got to get out there and, and let people know. You got to talk about you. You can sell yourself better than anybody else. Okay. And so I stopped because I had a hard time saying award winning author because I was like, wow, <laughs> that sounds so hefty. And she was like, but you are. So yeah. I start putting it out there, author, award-winning author, letting people know. Because if I don't let people know who I am and what I do, how are they going to know? How are they going to know? That's so true. Girl, yeah. you ain't said nothing but a word right there, okay? Because <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, I was like, I was really inspired by that. And yeah. then listening to you, you're such a bubbly person. You're so encouraging. And that that that's wonderful. And even in this author journey that I'm on, it, it, it's encouraging, um, you know, because you, you want to be accepted. You want, you know, exactly. to be able to connect and network. But sometimes... You know, some people are not just, they're not too um, okay. they're not well, open and friendly and accepting. Yeah. You got to yeah. you gotta have a thick skin for that. Okay. Yeah. And that's I something know. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are as we're living this yeah. life. Period. Yeah. Right. Because nobody uh, likes to be rejected. Exactly. Exactly. Let me read a little bit about you to okay. my, uh, let my, my audience know who you are, those who are listening live and that will come and listen after this show is over. Um, this is Natalie R. Murphy. She's an award-winning romance novelist. And y'all, I'm telling you, y'all, it was a surprise. Okay. <laughs> She's a wife of 37 years, mom of three, and new to the Empty Nesters Club. Okay, girl. <laughs> Sounds like she's pretty excited about that one. <laughs> she says she's a through and through romance junkie. Potato chips are her weakness. <laughs> uh, she collects unicorns, dolphins, mermaids. She loves music, photography, and jumping double dutch. Okay. She is from back in the day. And I see yeah. that. Uh, it says she started her writing journey during the pandemic, which, you know, I, I think a lot of uh, authors have. But th this is good what I'm, what I'm seeing here. Um, she says, after fighting with God for three weeks. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said losing that battle was one of her greatest triumphs because to date she has written seven. Did you hear me, guys? seven, the number of completion, yes. written seven romance novels, three of which have won literary awards and two of the three have won Distinguished Authors Guild Awards. This is wonderful. Yes. Uh, as a self-published author, I have also, this is her talking, created a self-publishing workshop called From Pen to Published, The Road to Self-Publishing. This workshop walks writers step-by-step through the process of becoming a self-published author. And then Love Beyond the Waves is the one that's been nominated for the 2023 DAG Award. Now you heard me, we had to distinguish what year it was, okay? Cause she's won a couple of them, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is wonderful. And you can find her book at natsbooks.net. Is that correct? Correct. And also she has an online bookstore. We're going to make sure that we put that into the comment section so you guys can uh, follow her and purchase her book. And um, now all of the books are on there, right? Yes. Yes. Netsbooks.net is my website. So you can get all of my books there. And I also have a free booklet that I put out there. Just a whim of a thing that I did. It's called As the Water Flows, The Diary of a Shower Head. So it's it's a shower's head perspective of what he sees on a daily basis with people that get in the shower. 
So Ooh. that was yeah. free, and it's 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 a riot. <laughs> You know, it sounds like it is. And I think we were on, was it Shanna's show? Um, um, no, 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 no. It was on um, Gina's show, I believe. And yes, I think you were talking yes. about. Uh, I'm sorry. We, the nominees are all over the place, y'all. We interviewing a different, different platform. <laughs> <laughs> interviewing and being interviewed. But um, I know she talked about that. Oh, my goodness. I almost fell out my seat because it just sounded so <laughs> hilarious. And I, I need to get my hands on it because it just sounds like something that is very um, a conversation starting, which probably yes. just have you just cracking up laughing. Um, so th this is good stuff. All right. Let's just jump in here. You know, guys, again, welcome, Natalie. Uh, to the show. She is, again, um, one of the nominees for Distinguished Authors Guild, and um, she, she's doing great stuff. So let's back up. You said uh, during the pandemic is, was, was when you started your writing journey. So that was the first time you ever started writing a book, or had you started before and then maybe it just came back up during the pandemic? I've had writings. Um, never really a book. Like I've written my first real writing was um, a poem that I wrote for my high school sweetheart. So since then, periodically, I wrote I wrote poetry, and I've written a couple of children's kind of I guess what you call like book listed, not real big books or anything. But I never thought about doing anything with that. Okay. Um, and during the pandemic, I woke up one morning. Cause I'm, I'm an early riser, so I'll lay in bed, and plan my day out, kind of get an idea of what I'm gonna do. And this storyline came to my head, and the names Jabari and Shannon. And I was like, "Ooh, I like that." And um, as the story that you excited, huh? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> and as this story started to develop, clear as day, I heard God say, "Write the story." I went, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Seriously, I did. I said, I'm not going to do that. And every day for about three weeks, the story kept developing. And God kept saying, write the story. And I'm like, oh, he's not letting this go. And I, was, <laughs> I gave him every excuse under the sun. I don't know anything about writing professionally. I don't know anything about publishing a book. I don't need, I don't know who to talk to. And so finally, <clears throat> excuse me, when I finally ca caved, <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this. Right. But you won't have to sit in front of that computer with me because you know I don't type. So me and these fingers here started pecking on the computer. <laughs> and in about three months, I had a completed story. And I was like, I know I liked it. And <laughs> I'm 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 a diehard romantic. This came from me, from my heart. So I was, of course, I liked it. So I let one of my girlfriends read it, who's very honest with me, who's an avid reader. And she was like, Nat, girl, you gotta do something with this. And I was like, oh, okay. So I let my mom and my sister read it, and they said the same thing. So fortunately for me, I love doing research. So I started researching, publish, getting a book published. And that's how I got through this process. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. You know, you, you had a couple of good things going for you there. One of which you were able to allow um, a friend to read over yeah. it and to kind of give you that push that, yeah. I need to do it because God yeah. had been telling you all this time and you just kept, <laughs> I was just like, kept saying, no, I'm not getting ready to do that. <laughs> I don't know what why I thought was your hindrance, though. that I had never, okay, again, I'm a pip. Now for me to put a book out there, I got to come up in the front. I got to be in the front line. So I had, I was thinking about, well, if I do this, uh -huh. How do I get what's in my head on paper to Annette understanding my vision, to my mom understanding my vision, to people I don't know understanding my vision? You know, and, yeah. and again, there's that rejection. What if they don't like it? 
So though, yep. that was a big hindrance for me. And it, it just stepping out and doing something I've never done before. Okay. And I, whereas I had a support system, none of them had ever done it. So none of them could coach me or guide me in it. Right. So it was it, it was it was pretty scary. It really was. Oh my goodness. So yeah, because you know, we're typically we don't want anybody messing with our comfort zone. <laughs> exactly. If exactly. we're there, it's like like you were mentioning about, you know, you were pip, you know, your comfort zone is to be <laughs> in the background. You know, right. I love that. I love that analogy. I probably have to use that. I love <laughs> that analogy. She's a pip. She don't want to be out in front. And and right. God is like, no, but I need you to do this. Yes. Uh, why do why do you feel that God kept insisting? Um you know, because, you know, a lot of times he'll tell us to do something and, you know, God, you know, sometimes he'll linger on with us or whatever. Why well, I'd be like, okay, let me get somebody else to do it. Why do you think that he insisted and kept telling you that you need to write this? Because with all the ills going on in the world, and especially during the time of the pandemic, when people are depressed and we're sheltered in, um, with all the craziness in this world, there needs to be an outlet. We need an escape. And that's what my books are. My books are an escape because even, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what neighborhood you live in. We go through trials and tribulations. And sometimes we need to say, hey, I, I need a happily ever after. I need something that's going to touch my heart and make me smile. Mm -hmm. And that's what my books do. I've always been a dreamer like that. And I always feel like, why can't, you know, when that whole Rodney King thing, thing came about and everybody was like, oh, he's, you know, they laughing at him because he said, can't we all just get along? But that's right. always been my thought. Why can't we all just get along? Yeah. You know, and if we can't get, get along and and love each other, why can't we? Yeah. So the reality of it is we know the enemy is out there and he's not mm -hmm. going to allow that to happen. So my books are to give just a little bit of relief from all the animosity in the world. Yeah, yeah. And we, we need that. We definitely need that. And, I, um, and that's why I believe he had me to do it because he's like, okay, you, you're the one with the sappy little heart. Let me, <laughs> let's get some of that out there in the world. <laughs> Beautiful. See, God, God knows us too. And he, he knows Absolutely. what we're able to spread around. Yes. Like you said, you sappy yes. little heart. Here you are just so <laughs> I love you because you you just so you you just transparent and you just put it out there. It don't even matter, you know. And and almost like you kind of feel like God, God's got my back. I'm a, you know I mean, look a little crazy, Absolutely. but I, I know He got my back. Yes, I have no doubt. <laughs> right, right, right. So let me ask you the same question that I've asked our, our previous nominees that were on. Um, has your life been influenced um, by your experiences, or your experiences been influenced by your life? Wow. Um, my life has been ex influenced by my experiences. Hmm. I mean, okay, because life, ex life gives you lots of experiences. <laughs> and, <laughs> and people ask, um, what inspires me to write? How do I get my writing? A lot of what I write are things that I have experienced to a small degree. Now, I don't want anybody to think that these are actual stories because they're not. Right. right. But it may be a little pinch here and a little pinch there from my life, things I've experienced, things that I've seen that pull it all together. Mm -hmm. And this experience with Dag has really, really influenced my life. Beautiful. Before Dag, before the pandemic, before I wrote these books, this is not the person you would have been talking to. Really? You would, yeah. And you would have had a hard time pulling, knowing that there are people out there watching people I don't know, you would have had a hard time pulling information out of me. Okay. Okay. Because I was about to ask, would would it, would you be able, would we be able to talk to you at all? You know, are you kind of like one that would be in a shell or stay in a shell? Or Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was comfortable in my circle. Like you said, we, we're all comfortable there. Don't mess with our comfort zone. And that's where I stayed. But this, this writing journey has pulled me so far out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so, yeah. so far. Wow. That's good stuff, though. That's good yeah. stuff. 
Yeah. You know, again, God knows who we are. He knows what we're made of and what we're capable of and, you know, what we can do. We're, we, you know, put that restriction on ourselves. Yes. Um, but yes. I'm, I'm glad he kept tugging at you. I, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. Just, you know, sometimes we do need that comedic relief, you know, if you will. You know, yeah. we're going through so much and, you know, we were shut down for about, you know, a few years or whatever um, as, a, as a world, as a nation, different, you know, all over. And, and so we were, you know, hindered. Um, right. We looked at, we, we couldn't do the things that we normally would do. Exactly. You know, exactly. uh, our lives pretty much came to a halt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, and so many people lost so many loved ones and their right. lives just changed. And now they're looking at a new normal, you know, now. Yep. So, yeah, bringing in that comedic really, God, God knew, he, he knew exactly Absolutely. what we needed. Um, but yeah, that's, 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 that's good stuff. Um, let me, let me ask you about your, your family. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you're an empty nester now. <laughs> and so when we talk about family, we know that they know us intimately. They know who we are and what we uh, have done in the past. Was it a huge change for them to see you make this like, you know, kind of 180 turn and, 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 and start doing this now? Was it a change for them? And how did they react? I don't think it was a change for them because this is who I was with them. Okay. Okay. So, so they knew me this way, but when they read my books, they were like, Whoa, especially my sister. She was like, I didn't know you could write like that. And she's one of my biggest advocates. She tells everybody she's an award winning uh, romance novelist. She writes books, you know, so uh, she's like, and they're really good. And she's not a romance reader. Okay. So, but I've got her hooked on mine. <laughs> so, and my mom, my mom wasn't much of a reader, but she's like really into my books now. She, she read what she needed to read, but like for it, for enjoyment, but I've got her pulled along too with my books. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. What about yeah. your children? So... <laughs> My oldest daughter, now she's a graphic artist. She created the covers of my first two books. Oh. So, yeah, that's awesome. Wonderful. Um, and, and, but her life got busy, so she wasn't able to continue working with me. But um, she's my avid reader. She, okay. as a child, this girl could go, that girl would eat books. We got to the point we stopped buying them because she was going <laughs> to read us out of house and home. <laughs> now, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Okay. And my other two, my son and my youngest daughter, she um they're not they're not big readers, but they mm-hmm. are definitely fans of mine. Now my my baby girl did read um she read the first book and okay. she enjoyed it. My son, yeah, romance is not his thing at all. <laughs> but he is definitely one of my biggest supporters. This kid is 26 years old and he'll come sit on my lap like he's five. Oh. So, <laughs> my, so my, they, my- so they may not read them, but they are definitely supporters. Okay. Okay. Now, you know what? <clears throat> Their generation and um, maybe after, I think a lot of them probably migrate toward the audio. Do they migrate toward audio books as opposed to actually reading them? Do you? Do you? No, not my no. younger two. No. Okay. Um, my son's very much into sports. So he's he listens to a lot of sports podcasts. And, mm. and actually, my baby girl is too. She's a basketball player, and she plays in a band at uh, at school where she's when she's attending. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So okay. I only actually had one really avid reader, and that was my oldest. <laughs> that was the oldest. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I will say this about me: when I was young, oh my God, romance novels were the ultimate. That's I loved reading them. Yep. You know, all the time. And I'm like, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I was just, I don't know. I migrated to it. I was just attracted <laughs> to it and just, just enjoyed reading it. So yeah, I can, I can understand those who are romance and novel buffs. <laughs> that I, figured, really I, I say that I was destined to be a romance reader and writer because my dad was an avid reader. Got that oh, okay. My mom loved romance movies. Our first romance movie was um, uh, West Side Story. As a matter of fact, she named me after Natalie Wood, the actress. In- Is she? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I have put together. So my middle initial is R. 
Mm -hmm. My maiden name was Johnson, which is Jay. So I'm, I have superficially changed my name to Natalie Romance Junkie Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious are you serious and oh yes, my goodness yes. so i i there's it's no wonder that i ended up in writing and reading romance it's just it was destined it, it was, was destined. destined no way around it <laughs> wow oh wow that now that's interesting I, i'm wondering did you ever think that i mean did you ever think it would happen that you end up no, as a it wasn't even author? a plan it was that was nowhere on my radar to be a published author Mm. I, the poetry that I wrote, I still have that one of those children's stories that I wrote somewhere in one of my computers. Never thought that this would happen. Really? Mm. Okay. Was okay. Mm. <laughs> interesting. That's very interesting. I love it. I love this conversation. So that this is good to know, you know, about you and about your background. And as I was talking to Michael earlier, you know, um, you know, sometimes we. We, we may start off writing and then push it to the side mm -hmm. or whatever, or maybe years later. But yeah, so you, didn't, you never thought you would become one. That, that's I didn't. And I never thought I'd be doing a workshop because okay. teaching people how to do what I'm doing now. Um, yeah. Because I just felt like all that information that I garnered in that process, there's no way God meant for me to keep that to myself. Mm. So I have started doing the workshops. I've done two so far. Um, and one of my attendees has already published her book. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let me, let me back up a little bit. I know you said your daughter did your graphics for your first two novels. Mm -hmm. So you obviously self-published. Did you self-publish all your books? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, because... In my research, I compared traditional publishing with self-publishing. Okay. And I just found that self-publishing was more for me. I get to set my own timelines. Um, one of the things that I found with traditional publishing is, first of all, you have to get an agent. You got to get a literary agent. They cost money. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And your stuff can be out there for two, three years before anybody even looks at it. Okay, and then, and then at that point they can say no. So I, I'm like again, I don't want to be rejected. I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I and I just found that self publishing was more for me because again, I was in control of everything. I set the timelines. If if I pay for an editor, then it's on me to decide if I need this editor to be work a little faster or if right. I, you know, it, it's all on me. I do my, my, the editor that I have, I love her because she so gets my vision. And when she gives me options, well, this doesn't sound good here. Maybe this, that, and the other, I have the option to say, I don't want that. I want it to stay right. as it is. And right. I just feel like I had more control as a self-published author than traditionally published. Okay. Okay. And everybody's experience is different. You know, I mean, I get it. Um, so that, that, that's encouraging and everybody, now everybody will probably not self-publish and then, and vice versa. So, right. you know, it depends upon what, you know, is best for them. You know, just like Absolutely. you said, you, you brought out the reasons why it's, why it's good for you. Um, I myself, I'm just going to be honest, child. I just didn't even want to I didn't want to deal with all that extra stuff, you know. And I because get that. Man, I get that. <laughs> yeah, and it was my first time, and then you're you're nervous, like you mentioned earlier. You know, my family knows what I can do, but now this has got to go out to the world, you know. Basically, right. you don't want anything wrong. You don't want anything misspelled. Does this make sense? And I, I had I don't know how many proofs, you know, editors, you know, uh, <laughs> professional and personal. <laughs> Right, that was right. In my book before it came out, because I'm like, uh, uh I can't. You, you, you wanna, you wanna put forth your best foot. You know, you right. wanna do everything in the spirit of excellence. And if you Absolutely. are saying that you know you're a child of God and God told me to do this, God don't put out no junk. So Hello. you know, you have to be. <laughs> 
So I was very adamant about that. So I, I can understand. And then also because of the content of what I wrote about and how, you know, it was it was so personal to me. And I literally had to relive everything. To be honest, Natalie, I was drained by the time I was done writing. By the time okay. that last word went, I was just exhausted, you know, because sure. I literally I mean, emotionally, you know, in every way. So I'm like, I thank God for my publisher, you know, yeah. and, yeah. you know, just taking the reins and doing everything. I didn't have to worry about going to get the ISBN and all everything that goes into that. I didn't have to do mm -hmm. all of that. They proved mm -hmm. and stuff from everything. So I'm, I'm just grateful, you know, to be able to have that had that chance to, um, you know, work with somebody like that. But yeah, yeah so and talk about the consuming process as well. Yeah, yeah. So and I I'm, I'm blessed to not have to work a nine to five. So I had the time to do the research and do everything, walk through it step by step. So yeah, yeah. Um, publishing it just really depends on what you what your needs are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So then in your workshops, um, you know, talk about uh, these workshops a little bit. I mean, obviously, this was, you know, your baby. It was birthed <laughs> through yes. your experiences. Um, so what do you hope to accomplish? Um, and I know you already mentioned about one of your um, attendees have already published their own books. Um, maybe talk about that a little bit or, you know, just in general, maybe in a nutshell, what do you, what do you hope to accomplish with these workshops? So with these workshops, my goal is to help people who want to self-publish go through the process a little easier than I did. Um, because it was a struggle for me because I had to do all the, uh, pros and cons, the comparisons and the contrasting, and this cuts that out for them. Okay. This also gives them a network of people to work with because mm -hmm. they connect with other uh, soon-to-be self-published authors during the workshops. And then I also follow up with them to see where they are, to try to encourage them to keep going because it does get us to be a struggle. And like you said, for those books that are emotional, those people get drained. And they put yep. them down and don't want to get back to them. But the mm -hmm. thing is, I believe that everybody who God has said, write the story, has to get that story out there because somebody is sitting out there waiting for that story. Yeah. So yeah. That, that that's pretty that's what I want to get. I want people to start the process and finish the process without a whole lot of um, the, the yucky stuff in the middle. <laughs> Right, right, right. And no, that that's a good thing. I mean, you're you're taking off that that pressure off of them. Um, you know, depending upon, you know, what it is that their their book is about. So that that's a good thing. And I I think it's wonderful um for you to be giving like that. I mean, you're giving back and you're you're paying it forward. Um, yeah. you know what you had to deal with, and so you want to help somebody else um so that they, like you said, that they won't start and stop. You know, because right. it could, it could get to that. You know, yeah. a lot of times you're writing depending. You know, you know, like okay, right. I got to this point, but I got all that long way to go, <laughs> and that's just exactly, that's just a exactly. And I've heard people you know? say that they've had their books. They started ten years ago. They started twelve years yeah. ago, and it's still sitting on the shelf. And mm. I just feel that's because they didn't have that support system. They didn't have somebody to say, it's okay to put it down for now, but don't leave it there. Go back and get right. it. Right. And then the resources, you know, having exactly. the resources to be able to, right. to get it out there. Oh, we, this is good stuff. Good stuff. I'm telling you, y'all, I got me a new friend over here. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, you guys that are on, I think, uh, who was that that came in? I think I appreciate you coming in. Is that Demetria? Hey, girl. Hey, she says she's listening. I know some of you will um, be able to come back and listen to the entire segment of all my guests in its entirety a little bit later. And some are on live, some are listening on their lunch break. And I do appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments for my guests on today, as you're listening, go ahead and throw it into the comment section. You know, we'll make sure that they're tagged and they can be able to come back and, um, uh, 
share with you, maybe answer the question that you've given them, or if you just want to congratulate them, um, this is wonderful. Again, we're talking to the nominees for Distinguished Authors Guild 2023. And we know we're so excited for this uh, gala that's coming up, uh, the yes. award, if you will. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a blessing, as I stated earlier in, in that segment with Michael, it's a blessing to be able to network with other authors and, you know, kind of talk with them, uh, talk with them about their journey, about their book uh, or books in your case. <laughs> And um, so make sure you guys, if you see on the screen, Nat's Books, Nat's, N-A-T-S-B-O-O-K-S dot net is where you can find all of her books. If you did not hear it earlier, she's written seven. She has seven books and she has, and what do you call it, an article or something that you wrote also? Oh, my, my little booklet. Oh, yeah. okay. As and she has <laughs> She has a book. Every time I don't know why every time I hear I just laugh every time I hear about that. Because it was so, such a riot on Dope Living TV when we did it. <laughs> when I mentioned it. That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. And I just it just cracks me up. But uh it's it it's wonderful that you, you know, are continuing to push on. Do you do you uh feel that there are more books in your future? I do. <laughs> I absolutely do. Okay, okay. Because Gina talks about you a lot. She said this is one she was uh, shy and she didn't really want. But now look at her, and I'm like, okay, this is wonderful. So you know what? To be honest with you, they they asked me that question: Do I see any more books in my future? I'm like, I don't object to it, but that ain't sure they want my life. <laughs> well, see, as a romance writer, my mind is triggered by so much. But, yeah. Uh, should I say by f being a fiction writer? So okay. when I when I see things or people say things, I get triggered. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that's a thought. And then like some people are here write like two or three at a time. I can't do that. So I have okay. to put that idea to the side and get back to it later. But yeah, I, I get triggered by all kinds of things. It's like, yep, that sounds like a story. Wow. Like wow. <laughs> Do you ever think that any of your books maybe will turn into a stage play or a movie or anything like that? I'm just asking that question. Um, and I'm just putting out in the atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I um, have been acquainted with a few uh, film producers, uh, directors and everything. So those of you that are listening, Natalie, <laughs> yes, in the atmosphere. I love it. I love it. So um, before writing books, what would you say your passion was? Well, there's still I still have those same passions, just not doing it as much. But um, I worked in child care for 22 years. OK, I love I love. Kindergarten and under. I love kids. Once they turn six, well, maybe seven, then we should ship them off to an island somewhere because they, they get mouthy. And <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I love kids um, and photography. I was a photographer for about 12 years. Uh, pandemic shut that down. Yeah. So I wasn't able to do my photography like I wanted to, but mm -hmm. I did see an idea and I ran with it during the pandemic. It was called Portraits on a Porch. So um, what that was, was I would contact, well, I put it out on, on my social media and people would contact me to take pictures okay. on the porch with their families because we couldn't, we couldn't go out. So we take portraits on a porch and that was to kind of like a memory of that time, but it, it, it gave them an opportunity to get out of the house and have some fun because they weren't just the standard, let's just take the family picture. They, um, it was during graduation time. I really love doing graduation time because they decorate the yards and they'd have their pictures. Um, I mean, the graduates dressed up and things like that. So that was a lot of fun to do during the pandemic. And then I get, um, donated uh, the proceeds from that to a organization that uh, fed homeless families. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So, yeah. So I'm, okay. I just moved to Arizona, so I'm okay. not doing my photography as much right now, but I, I'm waiting for this weather to break just a little bit. 
But I do, I want to get out and start taking pictures because Arizona is absolutely gorgeous. So wait a minute, what kind of weather do you have now? Oh, today I think it's supposed to be 95. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's, cool off. it's cooled off since I've been here. When we moved, moved in August, it was 117 degrees the day we moved here. And that's pretty much how August went. September, pretty much. Yeah, so it's, yeah, today's a cool day. Oh my God. <laughs> so you lived. I see why you at home. You live in the air condition? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I have oh, a friend really? of mine. Her mom just moved. I call her mom my mom as well. Her and her husband just moved to Arizona. Well, I guess I think they've celebrated a year being there, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um God. And she's like, when y'all coming? Uh when the <laughs> when the when when the weather to go south. <laughs> yes, because it's a little warm right about now. I'm not complaining, though, I'm okay. not, because I'm over the ice and the snow in Chicago. I'm so over that. So I can imagine. Yeah. What made you want to move there? Like, I know we're talking about something else, but what made you want to move to Arizona? <laughs> okay, so I didn't. Because <laughs> it's too hot. I'm, I am not a hot weather person. I love the fall. Okay. Um, but my husband, since I met him, has always wanted to move somewhere warm. So okay. he gave me 37 years in Chicago. Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, but we stayed there. And I never wanted to move out of Chicago because I didn't want to leave my family. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother moved to Arizona and about four years ago, he and his wife. And last year, my mom and my sister moved to Arizona. So they left me. So I had to come back. I had to get to my family. <laughs> I guess you came back to your husband. Uh, okay, we can go now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I got the perfect place for us to go. <laughs> wow. So are you guys at, like in the same uh, city? Yes. Okay. Uh, my brother and I are. My brother's about five minutes away, and my mom and my sister are about twenty minutes away. That's not bad. No, not, not at all. And it's everybody like a whole few states away <laughs> across the country. Wow. Okay. All right. Now we didn't get off talking about weather and everything and different uh, states we live in, here. but that that's interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, have so you ever doubted? What I'm was sorry. that? Uh, I was gonna say this is a new thing for me though, um, and this this uh, brings us back to the books because I had a following in Chicago. I don't have a following here in Arizona, and my newest book is. Um, I'm releasing it on the 21st of this month. Okay. So uh, again, another leap out there where I'm just totally depending on God to make this book um, signing a uh, success because I don't know a lot of people out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay because I mean, obviously you, you uh, were blessed, like you said, to have a following here. Um, and that's because obviously of the content, you know, mm -hmm. folks in Arizona, they, they like romance too, I'm sure, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. and uh, I'm sure it won't be difficult to do that. It's just, you're just in a new area now. And so you just right. have to adjust. And right. if that, right. if that sister is the one that you say have been really pushing and promoting you, I'm sure she'll help you out, you know, with, yes. the, with the book. Yes. <laughs> Right, right. I love it. I love it. That, and, and that's beautiful. Again, it's so important to have that that support behind you. I promise you. It really it is. is. Um, but yeah, that that's good stuff. So I was going to ask you, have you ever doubted yourself um, in your ability and what in what to do? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And how did you handle it? Again, I have no I have nothing to compare it to. Uh, nobody that I know. Okay. So it's like my now my writing is one thing that I've always been confident in. I've always been in my in my educational career, English, social studies, anything that required writing and researching, I was a plus student with that. So I was I was okay with that. It was the rest of it. Am I going to be able to step out of this comfort zone and talk to mm -hmm. people? And tell people about my book. Am I going to be able okay. to go to events and actually sell my book to people? You know, and are they, I know I like it, but are they really going to like it? So, yeah, it's, 
I, I've doubted mm -hmm. it. It's like, who do you think you are? When I first started, who do you think you are going to put a book out there? Somebody's going to read. But you, if you don't do it, you never know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You're so right. And then, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I keep going back to that encouragement because even I, mean, I can I can understand what you're saying. You're like, okay, it, it's here, it's finished, but how are they going to receive it? And right. then when you get, you know, those encouraging words from family and friends, maybe whether it's at the exactly. book signing or otherwise, or or even uh, reviews on the various platforms that your books are sold. Oh, that, ooh, that gives you, you know, kind of give yeah. you some wings there, you exactly. know, kind of exactly. you up a little bit and right. encourages you. So. Exactly. <laughs> that, that is so, that is so good to hear. Cause we, we have to silence those doubts, you know, that um, go on in our head. Cause we, we are our biggest critic. Yes. And, you know, yes. we're always, no, 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 no. I always tell people when I started this, um, this radio show, we'll be celebrating 10 years in November. But oh, ev in the first year, thank you. Thank you. In the first year, child, I'm going to tell you the very, was it like maybe like a whole month straight mm. um, that I started the show every time I would end, <laughs> and I laugh at myself now, every time I would end a segment, I always go back to God. Are you sure that's what you want me to do? <laughs> I get that. I yeah. get that. I still do that. Yes. Yes. Right. And it's, and it's not like, you know, I mean, you're not, you know, a little loopy or whatever, but this is like, you just want to make sure that you're in his will. You're doing exactly yes. what he wants you to do. Yes. And yes. then of course, you know, how you're received. Um, with people as well, you want to be able to do exactly what he wants, so they will receive what he wants them to receive. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always say it has nothing to do with me at all. Like I ain't got nothing to do with none of this. This is all about God. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so exactly. I. I yeah, I get it. I get it. Starve those doubts. Starve, starve them. Keep it moving. Yes. Keep it moving. <laughs> I like that. Starve the doubts. I like that. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's so important. It's so important. Um, let's see, what difference do you endeavor to make, uh, whether it's with your books, your workshops, um, or whatever else you got going on? Uh, what difference do you endeavor to make in people's lives? I want to be an encourager. I I just I want people to to know who they are, to be encouraged in what they're doing, to take the chance. And getting out there and doing something different, whatever it is in their heart, I want to be able to help them say, yeah, I can do this. I don't mean, have any glory from it at all. I just, I just like knowing, I just feel like that's part of what I'm supposed to do, encourage people. And, yeah. and in that, that also gives them that love to, that we're supposed to be loving one another. So mm -hmm. that's my way of giving my portion of love is to support and encourage. And, and I hope that I do make that difference in someone's life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing it. You're well on your way, hon. I'm telling you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I know you and I just met, but I, I just love your spirit. I really do. And I love um, the fact that you, you know, want to help people and you are encouraged, uh, encouraging to them. Uh, <laughs> I already Thank said you. when we started <laughs> off, you encouraged me. I saw that. I, I was like, okay. Just change this. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, right. So you are igniting others or whatever, you know. So you're telling me, girl, you need to push yourself more, you know. <laughs> out there. So I, I love it. I love it. I, I love again your spirit. So Thank let's you. see. Okay, so you have well, next steps. I know you said your book is coming out, your latest book is coming out October 21st. October is that 21st. Correct? Yes. Sweetest day. Okay. That's right. It sure is. <laughs> Go ahead. I see your romance novelist. I see, you. I see you. Okay. And so what, what's the name of that book? So the name of that book is To Be Loved by Blue. That's it there. Ooh. And it's Look, about... That Put, that Put that book back up there. Put that book back up there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like that. Oh. Yeah. So it's okay. about Antoinette. Tony Kennedy, she has no plans for love in her life. She's done with it. She's been disappointed by by all the police officers in her life. She seems to be attracted to a police officer. 
which is where the blue to be loved by blue comes in. Okay. And um, then she meets Officer Darius Johnson, who's full of corny pickup lines, and she can't seem to shake him. <laughs> and they um so they go through their thing. There, there's a lot of bantering between the two. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then they happen up on a dog fighting ring. Mm. So they, you yeah, want to leave it so, there? You want to leave it there? We're going we're gonna to leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Okay. But I can't. Happily you. ever after. All of my books are happily ever after because I'm just a happily ever after kind of girl. Yes. <laughs> if y'all didn't hear her already, she is a romance junkie. Okay. Yes. So I, absolutely. Right. Romance is my drug. <laughs> That's a good drug. That's a good drug. And Absolutely. wait a minute. Come on now. You've been married how long? 37? 37 years. Yes. 37 years. Okay. So she she has the, the papers to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not married 37 years for nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of uh, give and take, compromise. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> moving to Arizona. Now let me start. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Nelly, this has been such a pleasure. I'm telling you, thank you so much myself. for joining thank me on you. today. Uh, and thanks for coming in earlier. She was due on at one o'clock, but we had her come in a little bit earlier because our other uh, guests uh, didn't make it. Um, but no, you no. filled in that time perfectly. So thank you so <laughs> much uh, for sharing sure. with us. And uh, congratulations again on your nomination. And Thank we just you. pray that God will just continue to bless you in everything you go to say and do. Yes. Thank you. Same to you. And I look Thank forward you. to seeing you in Vegas. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We're going we gonna to get it. We're going to have our red on. We're going to yes. come on. Now. I already got mine. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be so wonderful. So yeah. thank you again um, for taking time out and sharing with us on today. I'm going to bring in our next guest soon, but I, again, I just appreciate you and just bid you Godspeed. You take care thank of yourself. You. Same to you. All right. All right. All right, guys, as you see on the screen, Natalie, Lady Shutterbug Murphy. That's a, that's a Facebook name, y'all. All right. But all seven of her books, you can go to www.natsbooks.net. It's on the screen. Um, so make sure you, you reach out to her and you purchase her books, support her. Again, she has workshops and they can find your information about your workshops on your website. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. All right, guys, go to natsbooks.net and you will catch up with Natalie and uh, you won't be disappointed. All right. Take care, yeah. Natalie. All you right. Too. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, guys, as she's exiting off the stage, we're going to bring in our, our final uh, guest on today. Woo. And that's been talking a whole lot today, y'all. And I appreciate you, you all coming in with me on today. I know Demetria Brand Tripler says she was listening. Greetings from Elder Kevin McGee. Thank you so much. And then Shana, Shana, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but thank you. I appreciate you, my fellow radio show host and fellow nominee. Uh, she says, good afternoon to everyone. So thank you. Now we're going to bring in my final guest on today, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Tommy. Oh, he got a yes. school name. It's not just Greg. It's Gregory. Y'all see that on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's how you started out, right? That's right. That's right. How are you doing, sir? I am wonderful. How about yourself? I am doing so great. I am doing great. It is such a wonderful time talking with all the Distinguished Author Guild nominees, and it's, it's just such a pleasant, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a pleasant thing to be able to meet you guys, whether it's virtually, and hopefully we'll get a chance to meet a lot of people in person in November. Um, but I'm glad you're on. Thanks for taking the time out on today uh, to come and talk to us. Well, you're so welcome. Now, do me a favor. Can you talk to us a little bit about who Mr. Gregory uh, <laughs> Thomas is? <laughs> Well, well, Greg Thomas is a 28-year veteran in, in the public in the public school system here in oh. Plano, Texas. Okay. Uh, I'm also a, a, a basketball coach, and I work with at-risk kids. Do you? Yes, yes. 
Oh, wow. I love that. I love it. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Now, will you come on here? Because I, I, you have quite a bit on this, this uh, biography that you sent me. Um, so Plano, Texas. Um, before we start talking about your books, talk to me a little bit about this, um, you know, working with at-risk youth. Well, here, the, since the pandemic, we've changed the direction with our department. It's called the uh, Plano Attendance Review Board. And what okay. we actually do now is go out and find all the students that are in jeopardy of not graduating uh, and try to get them back into school and, and get them that that extra nudge to continue their education. OK, OK. Now, are these individuals who um, maybe they've had a rough upbringing at home or, you know, they just decided I don't want to have anything to do with school or is it a combination of that and maybe more? All the above. OK, OK. We're a suburb of Dallas and we have every walk of life. Uh, average income is about one hundred and ten thousand. Mm. So we have those that are struggling as well. Yeah. Many um, second and third households. Um, yeah. So we have all kinds of young people not finishing school and in yeah. jeopardy. They quit school or we're trying to get them before they quit school to uh, mm -hmm. finish their education. Okay. Okay. Now, how is this received? You say you 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 kind of look out for those who um, haven't finished and you want to try and encourage them to come back. How how does that? Show us how that looks. Um, now you got this deep voice, okay? So <laughs> I'm sure you can encourage some. <laughs> but they, they are they receptive? The honey. <laughs> they call me the bounty hunter. But uh, it's it's just showing love. You go find those young people that have quit school, that are working uh, many old jobs. Uh, okay. Those that have, you know, like you said, problems at home, run away, uh, and you try to get them to reinvest in their future. And then yeah. we try to, once we get them to finish high school, we, then we get them to the junior colleges, community colleges, uh, get them into trade programs, whatever can help them become uh, valuable citizens in, in, you know, here in the United States. Okay. Okay. All right. I got you. I understand. Um, and that, that, that's good. We, we need so much more of that, like yes. everywhere. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, cause you, you kind of look around and see how our, our youth, they're really suffering. Um, whether it's because of the environment that they grew up in or the, the hand that they were dealt in life, um, they, they're, they're suffering. And so then they act out, you know, or they um, just quit or they yeah. just quit. You yeah, yeah. So many young people just sitting on the couch, just wow. sitting on their couches at home, uh, not working jobs, um, mm -hmm. and sitting up and having two and three kids before the age of twenty. So we're trying to break many, many different cycles. Yeah, uh, and, and once again, try to help them to reinvest in in their future. And, okay. and many of our young people are just lost. They they don't know how to work hard. They they don't know what it's like to persevere. They just stop and then we yeah. try to find ways to get them back engaged mm, okay i love it what attracted you to this particular uh area of trying to help the at risk uh actually i, I did everything i could possibly do to stay out of public education i'm a okay. third generation uh of a graduate and a parents that worked in the public education and I tried everything I could not to get involved with it. Uh, but my junior year in college, uh, I didn't make some decisions in, in, in my studies. And for not completing a, a, a couple of classes, uh, my professor in, in the social work made me take three more classes. And then it kind of spurred uh, a hunger to get out and try to, to help other people help themselves. OK, OK. Huh. All right. So a little bit of your, you know, background, that's kind of what, you know, attributed to it. Um, well, that's good. But you said you were trying to stay away from this. That's Everything to stay away from public education. You know, you got Man. parents that are teachers and principals, grandparents that were, were teachers and great grandparents. They weren't even supposed to be able to read and write. They were See? educated. And See? so uh, it, it was a happenstance. And then it was something that you know, God put me in a position to be, and he had things going on, 
in my life that I couldn't see. And then he put me where I was and, and then we just made the best of it. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So how do we make this transition from an advocate for at risk youth to an author? Well, the, the authorship was 14 months in preparation and working and 40 years of practice. <laughs> it took 40 <laughs> years to get it out. And, wow. Uh, that, that's a little bit different, but it only took, you know, during the pandemic, I myself found uh, myself void of time when we only had the students for half a day. And so mm -hmm. I, I made up that time with four hours of, of writing, rewriting, uh, trying to formulate, getting insight, uh, taking criticism and, and and critiquing and then putting it back on paper until we, you know, 14 months later, popped the book out. Wow. Ooh, he said, but you did say 40 years of uh, preparation. <laughs> 40 years of picking it up, putting it down, uh, raising a family, getting frustrated, getting angry at some of the situations that occurred that's in the book, and mm -hmm. then picking it back up, and then having children and trying to give them something to aspire to do. Like I said, I'm, I'm a fourth generation college graduate. Okay. So how do I tell my children to go to school and, and try to push forward and my grandchildren if I can't, you know, set that example also? Right. So that's why, you know, finally got it to where we can put it on paper and had an opportunity and and some great assistance. You know, my wife was good. My, my team that I work with with the Plano Independent School District was good. Um, and then having teammates that always said, hey, man, you need to make sure you document and put this down at, it, it'll be something to tell. And uh, right. like I said, 40 years later, we put it out there. 40 years later. Okay. How many books do you have? I have one book now. I will begin the second book probably in April after basketball season in 2024. And then we'll see how long that takes before I work on book number three. It's already, it's already planned. It's already uh, prayed about and it's going to come to fruition. Okay, I got you. I hear it. Okay, what's the name of the book that you are uh, that's been published already? No Doubting Thomas, Hall Whisper, My Arkansas Experience. And it, it details, uh, depicts in my four years of being the first starting black quarterback at the University of Arkansas from 1984 to 1987. Good Lord. Okay. So I mean, it, it had to take a little bit of time, right? All right. Yeah. So um, before it came out is what I'm saying. So no doubting Thomas, and you gave some extra stuff after that. Can they search it by no doubting Thomas? No doubting Thomas dot hall whisper. Okay. Um, at gmail.com is my, where you can find my email address. Um, it's available in audio and print. And uh, an ebook, uh, anywhere you purchase your books, so bookstores, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or through me at the no doubting Tom dot hog whisper at gmail.com. Okay, all right, hold on. I want to put all this in here so put they can even email you. No doubting, yes. I'm sorry, no doubting. Did you say dot hog whisper? No doubting Thomas. Oh, okay. Dot, dot H A W G Hog Whisper at oh. gmail.com. So you kind of okay. played on my name, Doubting Thomas. That's yeah. The title of the book. Oh, yes, ma'am. I see yeah. that. Okay. Yes. I'm going to put this Gmail, but you also said you're on Amazon and where else? And all, wherever you can purchase the book, you can, you can get it. It's amazing, though. If you get it from me, I cut out that middleman. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's the best part about the whole thing. Uh, right. Yeah, and they can do is, that by emailing you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You email me there and, and it comes straight to me. I'm still working on the website. You know, we're doing school. I got school things I have to do. I don't have time to have them put that part of my life together yet. But, okay. Are you able to see the screen? I want to make sure yes. I put that up there right. That is so is correct. that the right Gmail? Whisper or ER on Whisper. Whisper okay. ER. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna correct this guy because I, I want to make sure that um 
this is right. ER on whisper. Yes, okay. ma'am. See, you understand mm -hmm. the hall whisper, like I'm telling other secrets. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I get it. I get it now. I get it. Okay. All right. But they can All purchase right. it through me if you go there, or you can hit me on, on Facebook uh, through Messenger. But mm -hmm. like I said, you know, I, I don't have a problem with, with Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and think that's that's their good hustle. My hustle is I get 80% when you get it from me. Come on now. You see what I'm talking about? And I'm, I'm learning the I'm learning the business and yeah. the, the, the entrepreneur side of me, you know, get it straight from me. You get the autograph and things like that. You go through Barnes and Noble, you gotta catch me around to get it signed and autograph. <laughs> so you want that autograph copy that's what he's yes. trying to tell y'all okay yes. yes all right i love it and he also gets more of the money back all right i got it i'm i'm with you there all right greg thomas's book no doubting thomas listen guys i want you to make sure that you reach out uh go uh email him go to amazon barnes and noble and the other uh platforms where you can purchase books to get his book so let me ask you this okay so um this is is it loosely based off of your life or fully based fully based. Uh, fully based all right now y'all y'all see how you me <laughs> well it's here's the funny part about it uh -huh. i self i self published this book okay i went through four or five different uh book let's say publishers or university press etc and they only wanted dirt. If I was going to be most negative thing, they would have taken it. And I'm not going to give those universities or the university press his name out. That's but right. if, if I was going to be negative and dirty, they wanted to take the book. When I decided to give a factual account mm -hmm. of what was going on, well, they didn't want to touch that. So it, it's very interesting. Um, but it's, on, it's, it's also... You know, it's facts. I gave mm -hmm. facts. Um, okay. And you can look at, I have four or five different teammates in the book. I have Hall of Fame coach Nolan Richardson, who's not only in the book, he, he gives quotes in the book. Okay. Um, I also have a, a former sports um, director, or assistant sports director in the book, so they can all verify and say, yes, we know this took place, this took place, etc. Right. I didn't right. throw anyone under the bus in terms, I didn't put my teammates' information out there. That was something else that they wanted me to name. And I mm -hmm. played with some Hall of Fame players and coaches, and they wanted me to put those, put them in there and give negative trash on them and things like that. I said, yeah. I'm just talking about my experience as an 18 to 22-year-old, what it was like, and how you know you persevered and worked through it and helped shape my life and i didn't all that other stuff i could have added but i didn't do that right 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 yeah i mean you, you were using some integrity obviously um in deciding what to put out and um you know let the world see yes. um so but there are stories don't miss in that there there are i can i got stories i, I bet you do stories that i didn't put in there I'm but sure. I didn't think it would it would serve the purpose of sh of shedding that light that I was trying to shed. This is just my experience. Did I put all of my experiences in there? No, no. Right. Some things need to be kept in house. Okay. You know, all right. They, they, you don't tell everything like that. Yes. Um, but I, I ended up with, you know, eighty five of the best brothers from another mother. Yeah. And, and, and I let them tell their story. If they want to tell what what was going on with them, then. They can do the same thing that I did. I didn't want to put it out there and then have that that negative feeling coming back because there mm -hmm. are some stories in that you don't talk about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's family, it's family, you know. It's some family. Things you, some <laughs> things you can air, but there are some things you just need to, you know, let them dead dogs lie. <laughs> that, right. Don't be rustling up nothing, right? right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, 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 all things are lawful, but some things are not expedient. So yes, you, know, you can't, you can't share everything. So, um, what was the motivation behind writing about this particular sh subject just because yeah. you had experienced it or was there something further? And it was historical and, and the university still trying not to, to share some of that, that light. 
Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you do something or you accomplish certain goals, you want to be respected and you yeah. want to go and, 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 you know, I was the first to start. I am still the winningest quarterback in University of Arkansas history, but you never know it unless you speak into certain reporters because they don't post it like they post other things. Wow. You know, some of that is just, you know, hurtful at times, but you want to tell the story. And there is a story. You know, mm-hmm. I'm from San Angelo, Texas. Um, came from a great family. Played right. for some great coaches. Had an opportunity to go to college on a scholarship and play for an athletic director that's a Hall of Fame and, and a college coach that was a Hall of Fame. And mm-hmm. just shared that, that, that journey. And not everything is peaches and cream. Not everything works out the way you like it to. But you don't you just stick the course. And so yeah. uh, the story is the story. You know, my yeah. father, you know, I start the book out in, in the first chapter. We're talking about my father and he was going to college in Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a chance my sophomore year to start in Austin on a field that my father couldn't even walk across. Wow. So you talked about wow. that. And that's how my that's how I, I began the book was talking about oh. my father got it, you know, he got he didn't even go to the game. So that's how emotional it was for him. But that's how the book starts. And it's just factual. That's just deep. go from there and then go through the journey that I had, um, which was absolutely beautiful. You know, it, it is what it is. And you just accept it mm-hmm. and you go on about your life. Right. You learn or you should learn uh, from experiences. This is great stuff. Listen, um, what year What year were, were you, would you mind sharing the year you were at University oh, of Oh, 1984 Arkansas? to 1988. Okay, okay. So it's, right. it's almost 40 years, almost 40 years. Almost 40 years. Yes. Oh, we, okay. Y'all, y'all know I had to, uh, while he was talking, go ahead and hop on the internet. Y'all know that, right? Yeah, look it up. <laughs> look it up. Find it. <laughs> Yes, there. You can find you can find probably well, this, this twenty five games. There'll be twenty five games. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'm looking at the one archive I brought up. It talks about your book signing. Um, was it last year? Your book signing? Which well, one? at least one this in article. San Angelo or the one in Arkansas or the one in Little Rock. So there's been three. Oh, there've been three. Okay, all yes, right. Ma'am. So okay. I went to my hometown and did one in San Angelo. Um, uh huh where it all began. Uh, then I did one in Fort Smith and one in Fayetteville. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And both yeah, of those in yeah. Arkansas. Yeah. Ooh, we. Yeah, we got a celebrity on the show. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all, it's all good, though. It's yeah. all good. Hey, we can toot your horn. We're going we gonna to do you. it. We're going to toot your horn. Thank you, um, Let's see. I think Tiffany joined us. Thank you for coming in, Tiffany. Uh, she's a uh, wonderful. I had her on my show, was it last week? Um, but thank you for joining us on today. Um, yes. And all of you that are uh, listening, again, we are continuing on with our conversation and interviews with the nominees of the Distinguished Authors Guild. And so my last guest on today, Mr. Thomas, uh, we were just talking a little bit about his background, a little bit about the background of his book, uh, No Doubting Thomas. Uh, the full name of the book, No Doubting Thomas. I had it right here. Uh, Hog Whisperer and my Arkansas memoirs. Oh, we this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Y'all got to get this book. Get this book. Please, please. Uh, support him. Please make sure you support it. Uh, I had on here and I'm going to put it back up the email um, for you to reach out to him, nodoubtingthomas.hogwhisperer at gmail.com. Um, you can also go on Amazon and other uh, book outlets if you so desire, but make sure you support my brother. I want to ask you before we end on today a little bit. Um, I had Michael uh, Bailey on earlier. He was the first guest on today. And I did talk to him about um, our African-American uh, male authors. What does this mean to you as a black author to become one? Um, and how was that experience or did it even factor into you writing the fact that you are African-American? I've always, I've, I, I'm going to stop you there. I've been black my whole life. <laughs> I've been African-Americans. <laughs> I've been black my entire life. 
Well, you know, I got to be politically yes, correct, I you know. I understand that, and, and that's one area that I, I, I draw the line. I've been black <laughs> okay. my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think when I put it into perspective, it, it's awesome. And with a big A. And I say that because many of times I've gone to book club, book fairs. I'm an avid reader. And yeah. I don't look to see if it was male or female. But I do know that more females read than males. Being a coach, you try to get your young men to find other ways to express themselves. You know, and the easiest way to express yourself is to read because you never know. The mind is, is, a, is a heck of a minefield. And we yeah. don't do enough with our young boys to get them involved to imagine, to create, to uh, to see things through other people's eyes, mm -hmm. and and that's easy to do if we get them to read. But okay. we'll we'll let a little girl read. We don't we don't you know if a boy's reading. It's like playing the piano. That's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to do a better job of that. For my children and grandchildren, I wanted them to see that dad could do something else. Uh, for my basketball boys, and they've celebrated all along with it, uh, it's an inspiration for them also because they're already smart. They're yeah. already going to aspire. Now they can probably do something out there and then want to write about it and share that also. Um, I went to a book fair over here in South Dallas about two months ago, and I would say it's the first book fair in about... 10 or 15 years. And I went to see Troy Johnson, who's with the African American Literature Book Club, to meet him. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the book in different audiences uh, in front of different folks. And I was astonished at, at the layout. I was more moved by how many male authors that were there. Because you don't yeah. think about these things. Mm -hmm. And so when you push back or you leap, into a different area you, you have to take time to step back and look at and appreciate it. yeah and, and i appreciate it i appreciate it more now because the book has been recognized and that's an even bigger or an overwhelming response yeah um, and, and i might say and i'm gonna add this to it it's won the american uh writers award it was a finalist for mm -hmm. the book of the year there uh, was an independent publisher's bronze medal winner. Oh. We're up for the Distinguished Authors Guild now, and that's all in this calendar year. Yeah. So apparently something was done right. You know what I'm saying? And I could share that with not only myself, uh, my family and friends, but whomever finds this subject matter interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and it is interesting. And I said yeah. it's factual. And, and you know, you can argue, you can debate it, you don't have to like it, but it's out there. And yeah. so you, you take that and you appreciate it for what it is. I appreciate all the authors and, and what right. they go through and how they get rejected, <laughs> get dejected, <laughs> gets unselected, all those things that come about. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's a precious accomplishment and you, yeah. you, you appreciate it and I appreciate it. And one more thing, uh, the audio book, voiceover was through a uh, Greg Campbell. I don't know if you're familiar with Greg Campbell. If no, you're not, not. Go, go, he's a, an award-winning voice actor. Okay. He has commercials out there and everything. And I was moved that he uh, selected to take the book and do the audio book. Beautiful. Um, and hear his voice. And his voice is almost as deep as mine. But, <laughs> but I appreciate the, the the work that he does and him yeah. taking on the project and putting it out there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that's good because I was just actually, I think I was talking with Natalie about um, audio um, mm -hmm. books because it seems like a certain, certain generations or certain, you know, people, they kind of migrate toward audio yes. more than anything. You know, we're into this podcast, you know, where people love to listen to stuff as opposed to sitting down reading, you know, a lot of times and, you know, how can you, um, you know, be able to grab that audience as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's a good thing that you have it on, on audio. Um, I heard you mention that earlier today and you're, you're 
saying it again. Um, it's great that you have your book on audio. Um, this has been great. I, tell me um, a little bit more about uh, how you're feeling about this nomination with Distinguished Authors Guild and what do you hope to uh, get out of this? I, I was very moved to, to receive an invitation to even try to enter because I wasn't familiar with the Distinguished Authors Guild. And so it gave me an opportunity to research also and see who and what it would do, not only for the, the guild, but also for, for me. Uh, when you see a, a different African-American award, a black award, yeah. you get a chance to participate in it. Yes, yeah. you know, then you have a different appreciation. And there are some circles that, that, that you can't get into. Yeah. You know, That's true. And, and, yeah. and you understand that. I'm not a part of the country club because I don't want to be a, a part of a country club. <laughs> You understand? And I yeah. understand that also. But yeah. for for Miss Gina to reach out to me, it, it made my whole day. Being Beautiful. a part of this process has been eye-opening. Uh, and, and I appreciate all the other authors and, and I wish them luck. And and it's great to be accepted. And, and that's the best part of it. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we're we're grateful um, to be connected with you and uh, to be able to interview on today. I do want to thank you for taking time out with us and sharing um, about your journey, um, your literary journey and about your background of your life. Um, this has been tremendous. So I thank, thank you so you. much. Thank and you, uh, me. you are so welcome. And congratulations again to you on your nomination. And uh, we pray God's best for you yep. and everything you go to say and do. All right. Thank Did you, you want to share any next steps or anything um, with us before you go? Anything you have coming up? Well, coming up, like I said, I will begin the book number two in, 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 uh, in April. Hopefully it'll begin in April. Um, it won't take 14 months. <laughs> I think I understand <laughs> the process a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be uh, over something that happened 75 years ago. Uh, it's Whoa. also family related, but community related. Okay. And it will be uh, sharing the lives of three three men and 26 young men and their journey uh, prior to the Korean War and their accomplishments after that time. And I think it'll be a better book than, than No Doubt in Thomas. Okay. All right. Well, good, good. Sounds like you got some great stuff coming up. And I'm, I just pray that God will just continue to bless you as you're blessing others. Thank you, Val. Thank you. You're welcome. So thank you again for your time on today. Guys, we're going to get out of here um, and just let you know that meet us back on Friday. We have two more uh, nominees that we're going to interview from Distinguished Authors Guild. So I'm going to play that promo um, as Mr. Thomas is exiting on today. Uh, thank you again so much. You have a blessed day, okay? Thank you. Thank you. God bless All you right. also. Good All luck, right. everyone. Uh, same to you. All right, guys, like I said, I'm going to play the promo for Friday. I want you guys to stick with me. And I know and I appreciate you for joining in and sharing um, with me um, as I have uh, taken time out to interview, uh, set up interviews for the nominees of Distinguished Authors Guild. Again, we appreciate Gina Gadsden, her entire committee, all the nominees um, of Distinguished Authors Guild in like... Um, Greg was just saying it's just such a blessing um, and an honor to be a part of it. So take a look at this for the guests for Friday. Please join me at 12 noon Central Standard Time and I'll see you soon. Take a listen. On the next session of Get Caught in the Net. Get caught in a net with a